Like, just, like the shirt. Thank you. First compliment I've gotten all day, actually. Really? I saw it at a vintage shop. I was like, I got it. No, it's a, that's, that's a seriously nice. good shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't bring any spare change, by the way. Sorry about that. Well, fuck off then. <laughs> Have you any idea what Disney pays these days? I mean, this is this it's is true. you know it's like and and streaming. <laughs> I mean, you all know Pharrell's <laughs> Happy had sixty-seven billion plays, and he got two dollars fifty for it, or whatever it was. <laughs> so I wanted to talk about the you know, the emotional origins of you know the Lion King score in specific. I mean, I remember started like jumping with serious. Right? Yeah, God, I mean. <laughs> And there I thought we were going to have fun. We're going to have fun. Look, look, at, look at the man with the shirt comes That's in true. and then starts talking to me about psychology. Well, I, I, I know that... Death and dying. Death and dying. Let's go to the death and dying. Let's, so go, I, let's go to the dark side. <laughs> we're there. Well, you're... Um, I don't, it, no, I mean, it's, it's, I, I can joke about it now, yeah. but it did c catch me somewhat unawares when we were doing the original one. Mm. Um, that f the, the movie was about death and dying. It was about a, a father dying and, and, and how a son dealt with it. And I, I, I hadn't realized that even though my father died when I was six years old, that I had never dealt with it. Because mm. that's, I think, what children excel at, uh, how to hide terror, how to compartmentalize, how to tuck these things away and, you know, how to build walls. Mm. Um, I mean, we're far better at building walls than certain p politicians, it seems. You know? <laughs> um, but, you know, no, so, so let me carry on with the metaphor. So, so Lion King became a bridge. It became a bridge to sort of slowly let that seep out into the notes, you know. And um, I really wrote, wrote a requiem for my father. And mm. it's, it's you know, this film, which is about Africa, and I was so proud at the beginning because it starts off with, you know, the voice of Africa, you know, that, mm. that call, you know. And then it turns more and more European in its tone, you know, which is because I, I wasn't going to go and, you know, commit cultural imperialism. Mm. Right? And, and I said to Lepo, I'm going to write this for my father. I'm going to write completely European, and we're going to go to Africa, and I'm going to throw these notes at you. And let's see what happens when these two cultures collide, and let's not, let's see if not something new can come out of that. Mm. And so, I mean, that's that's really it. Did you feel like you were thinking about your father a lot when you went back to it this time, or was this a different emotional bridge? Was this more about you being a father? Um, me being a father, but in a very specific sense, in, in the sense of you know having worked with uh, Sir David Attenborough now for quite a few years and mm -hmm. realizing that we, we, we have this enormous duty to try to um, keep this planet alive and, and we're not the only animals. On this. this planet doesn't belong to us. We have neighbors that we should treat with, with a little bit more respect. And, you know, and, 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 and I think one of the things John has managed to do is show how beautiful and fragile this world is. Mm. And so, you know, so I can only think of my children in the context of I have to keep them alive. When you're alone, what do you go back and play for yourself? Do you go back to those early Oh, I don't play any of my own stuff. <laughs> Never. Just at Coachella. Well, the, the, the Coachella, was, Coachella was amazing. Coachella. You know, it was, it, was like, it was like a dare, and at the same time it was like, hey, this is cool. You know, take an orchestra and a choir out into the desert. So that seemed like a fun thing to do. And I said, and we're definitely not playing Lion King. And Niall Ma, 23-year-old son of Jolly Ma, um, said, Hans, get over yourself. It's the soundtrack of my generation, and we're playing Lion King. And we sure as hell did. And it was astonishing to watch 80,000 people grown men and women um, get get emotional. Honestly, I go back and watch the YouTube clip, like poorly recorded, I still get goosebumps. So, so it worked. So, so that, that was my proof, you see. And, and, and to go back to the com head of the conversation, Pharrell and Johnny were right. Hans, eventually you have to go and st stop hiding behind a screen, stand in front of people, look people in the eye, and it's going to be okay. And I, I, you know, I always had stage fright 
except for Coachella. I just walked out there. You know, our lights weren't working. You know, I could hear the guys in, in, in my in ears freaking out because they couldn't find the plug for the lights. And I'm going, I don't care. I'm going on stage now. <laughs> and it's a complete shambles out there. And I don't care. It's a shambles. I'm going to embrace it. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, I don't know, Lion King does something. It does, it, 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 it there, there is a timeless quality about it. And yeah. I think it's got something to do with that. It wasn't written because of an Oscar, or it wasn't mm. written because of the money, and it wasn't written for, for fame, fortune, or any of those things. It was written because I wanted to take my daughter to, the, to a premiere and show off as a dad, and suddenly found myself writing about something really serious. Mm. And all the musicians get it. Mm. Well, now we got to get you up there with Beyonce next year. It's a logical end to the story. Right. Anyway. You, you should, you should talk to her about this. I, I, I can't. I should not talk about. I'll that. call her up. I got, I got her on. Right. She, no, no, no. She, the, the, there is a, there is a connection mm. to what we did in, at Coachella and what she did. Yeah. Mm. Okay. True. Well, excellent. Well, thank you for the true romance score. Any time. Yeah. You know, yet again, you know, more, more, more death. True. Death and marimba seem to just go together in my life. <laughs>